Welcome back, folks. This is episode 37 of the Wet Shavers Roundtable, your weekly live interactive wet shaving talk show. I will be your host, Douglas Smythe of Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements.com. And with me to, well, he's probably down here, David Gonzalez from So Sharp Limited. Or it could be over there. He's chewing. The guy chewing, wearing glasses. That's what I'm talking about. Say hi, David. How's it going, everybody? It is a fantastic Saturday. I am happy to be back. I, I was getting withdrawals already, Douglas, from not having the show last week. So I was like, I was already getting yeah. cold sweats and shakes without being on. And so you should. And also with us, joining us again, is our one of our favorite hosts, uh, Marty Pape of MartyPape.com. Is that what it is, Marty? Something like that. That's I his YouTube that channel. Which I think it's still out there. Marty. Uh, Marty <laughs> is one of the original roundtable panelists, and he's joining us today uh, in lieu of, well, because we're lacking Scott for a little bit of the show. Scott is on the scene at the Rocket City meetup in Alabama, in Huntsville, Alabama. So he's down there right now, and he'll be calling at some point to say hi with some of the guys from down there. So we have a pretty epic show for you today. My dog is crying in the background. Just, just ignore him. Uh, so... Episode 37. That said, folks, it's been a, I mean, we're, again, this is going to be a hot seat type episode. We're going to pull in people from the, uh, the gallery, take a seat, and we're going to be looking at sh the current affairs happening in the wet shaving world. And uh, that said, I'd like to just, I don't know how many people out there have ever been to a vigil. I'm the guy, I'm the jackass who want to do a vigil to end all wet sh or to end all vigils. And so that was a big joke, but this is a serious matter here. Um, in fact, I'm representing my wearing my Soap Commander shirt today. Um, Luke Seibert of the Seiberts of Soap Commander was in a tragic, a horrible accident last week. And uh, it's the guys, he's in the hospital right now. Great kid. I got to meet him, fortunate enough to meet him last fall. Great kid. Uh, great with his hands, a builder, a repairer. That's what he does. So this is what he's going to have to do. He's in for a little bit of a struggle. He's in the hospital right now. He seems to have lost his vision as of yet. I don't want to say too much because I don't know too much. But um, but he's responsive and he's getting better. So uh, for, uh, just keep him in your thoughts out there, folks. And one way to do that is with, well, a good old fashioned lighting of the candle. So that's what we're going to do today's show. I'm just going to keep a little vigil going for Luke. Luke, you're in our thoughts, in our minds. And uh, you guys have anything to add to that? It's just. Um... <laughs> Uh, just to, yeah, it's, they're, it's just the families, our, our but, prayers go out oh, go to ahead, the Seibert's, man. Um, they're 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 handling the situation with a lot of poise, and um, I'm just really impressed. I've always been impressed with the family. I've had a relationship now with them for a couple years. Um, they're good people, and just how they the way that they're keeping those of us in the shape community um, in touch with what's going on and giving us those uh, the updates. I really appreciate it. I don't know if I'd be a, be in the right state of mind. Um, to remain as positive as they as they've been and and just so calm and I, I'm just they're just they're just generally impressive people man it, it's it's hard to put into word what I feel for these people right at this very moment particularly um, they're 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 just amazing the way they're handling it. I agree, I agree. And you, Marty, and I, I definitely agree. I've talked to both of them. Um, mainly carry since it happened. Um, and it's, yeah, the poise they have, um, the fact they're staying grounded and, you know, in the Lord, it just kind of, you see that strength, you know, even through the boys and myself, but I can't imagine even a minuscule amount of what they're going through, but to see how they're still staying so grounded, so involved, so just strong. Yeah. I can't imagine that strength, you know, but I, I know where it comes from from them, and yeah, they've been a family I've looked up to for quite a while, just because of their the way their the way their kids are, the way they are, just their honesty, their love, their passion for everything. So I just definitely hearts and prayers, thoughts Excellent. and prayers going out to them. I'm just trying to let's see. I have oh, there we go. I have Scott with us too, and he is again on the scene. He may actually be at the Cyberts now. That's where he was not too long ago. Let's see, Scott, where are you? Yeah, he said he's there, but not a spot for him to sign in. There he is. Hey. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Here's How's it going, Scott? For, there, and I am a he's there. Editor. So, hey, everybody. 
Hey, that's Sorry, awesome. How, how's everybody doing over there, Scott? Hey. You know, especially considering the situation. Here, let me just plug in really quick. Um, you want to say hi, Steve? Steve Walker's here. How's it going? Hey, Steve. What's up? Um, oh, hey, Darren. You want to come say hi? Darren's here. Hey, guys. Hey, how's Darren. it going, Darren? It's great to see you, bud. Great. Hey, hey thanks to all the West Shaving brother. World for all the love and prayers and support you guys are giving our family, man. You guys are just the best. <laughs> I tell you, man. I, I can only imagine. Blown away. You guys have just really – you guys have just really touched our family's lives, and I'm so thankful to each one of you guys. You know, Just keep praying. Cyber Strong. Uh, Doing great, absolutely. Man. You, you've you've been great. You've been great to all, you've been great to all of us out here in the community, Darren. And that's just the kind of relationship that you've built up. It's not so much that you need to thank us, and it's just it's us trying to show you thanks for the relationships you've built and you've treated a lot of us very well. And um, we thank you guys, and you know we're, we'll be here as as much as we can. Thanks, David. I appreciate that, buddy, so much. I'm so happy to be here. Right now. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. He's representing. Yeah. Thank it's you. Good. Thank you, Darren. It smells fantastic. You guys have no idea how good it smells in here. Douglas does. Douglas probably does. I, yeah. Oh, I know. I know. Very. It still burned in my brain. Uh, but thank you for joining us today, Darren. Like I can't even imagine, and I just I couldn't do what you're doing, and just uh, just hang in there, stay stay strong, man. I just. Yeah, I am. Carrie, Carrie's the one who's taking me. Taking care of Luke right now. So if you can just keep her especially in the prayers. Give her a hug for all of us. She's the real commander and and uh, she's she's got this. So um just uh keep thinking about Carrie. Mama, yeah. this it's hard on all of us, brother. Trust me, yeah. but but hard on mama. So I love yeah. you guys. Thank you so much. And uh keep shaving, man. Love you guys. Uh, absolutely. We'll see you soon, Dad. Yep. Love you, brother. Right, so let me plug in really quick. What an awesome way to start the show. I don't know about you guys, man, but that was awesome to be able to see Darren right there, man. That, that, that's, a, that's a hell of a way to kick off the show today. I know, well right? Done, Scott. Hey, the, it actually was just a coincidence. We were going to be headed down to the meetup in Huntsville, but we decided, you know what, let's let's head up <laughs> here. Because Darren told us that he was home, and so we thought, you know, let's go pay him a quick visit. And so it happened to work out that we were here. Well, tell him the gallery has really come to life. Everyone's uh, giving him a shout out. Yeah, this awesome. is the most active that I've ever seen the gallery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. So uh, now, okay, yeah. so today's we're going to be chatting about the wet shaving world, what's going on. We are going to be definitely coming back to this and, and talking a little more about uh, what's going on in the soap Canada world. Uh, in fact, anyone out there who doesn't know yet where they can donate if they if they'd so like to um, and it doesn't take much any little bit helps they can go to lukesfund.com and i'll put the link right here once i edit the show but lukesfund.com <laughs> it's currently Anybody showing $14,000 it's already been raised for this and just through that mention, and that's just through that website there is another one going on as well yeah. right there so that's just that's amazing that's amazing and i hope that uh, every penny of that could really help this family, man. They're good people, so yeah. yeah. Nobody I mean, else. I, I, I thought it was amazing. I thought it was amazing last year when people came Speechless. together for for my little fundraiser. But this has just been absolutely incredible. I'm so pleased and so proud of our community for doing this. You know, it's yeah. it's just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, no, no doubt. It always blows my mind when I see see us all get together like this. It makes everything else and all the drama seem like that. <laughs> That big. Yep. And you know what? It is that big because this is real life shit, you know? So uh, yeah, there you go. So lukesfund.com if you want to help us make a difference because any little bit really does help, folks. Yep. All this medical funds, I mean, th this is no joke. This stuff is really, <laughs> really, really, really expensive and costly. And this this little guy, he's got a, he's got a, he's got a journey ahead of him. Ahead. It's going to be expensive. Absolutely. And, and if I could quick for one quick second, I know it doesn't compare but I just yesterday and today got my ER bill for a small fracture in my foot. And just alone for that would have been $4,000 without insurance. So you can only imagine, I know the life flight. I think a lot of people say that stuff costs like $30,000 a lot of times and isn't covered by insurance. 
So believe me, it sounds like yeah. a lot of money, guys, but it's not. It is, but it's not, you know, for what they're going to go through. It's, yep. yes. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. So believe me, it definitely helps. So uh, on a little bit of a lighter note right now, uh, just before you take off, Scott, because I know you don't want to stay there yeah. too long uh, in front of everybody. How yeah, is – you had the morning – you had the morning – you're the morning meetup at the museum this morning. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. We got together at the uh, at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center Rocket. in Huntsville. It was amazing. Yes. So cool. I know, right? <laughs> I love that place. I was there three times in like the three days I was there. I think I was there every day. Like just <laughs> out to every, yeah. Yeah. As you guys can imagine. Dave said you should have uh, been here, man. I know. Well, that was my idea. <laughs> I wanted to have the meet the next week. I, I wanted you, to have this. So, uh, you didn't come. You didn't listen. <laughs> I was in Austin, baby. I was in Austin, uh, and we went on the tour of the whole of the whole campus. Like you know, it, that, awesome that was place. really cool. Like, yeah. the bus tour. <laughs> my br- my brother was actually a spring graduate, so I got to go. It's cool. go do the tour with him and really see him do all cool. stuff, different things like that. Very cool. Very so, cool. Um, and now the official meetup is happening afterwards. Right, yeah. So we're gonna head over to uh, the what is it, Yellowhammer Brewery? Oh, in okay. Just a few minutes. And, uh, I was there also. That's there like a hanger in there. So. It's it's like a hanger. Uh, is there anyone that sh- yeah. uh, any other artisans or vendors showing up there? Yeah. Um, I don't know about other. Well, we have a another oh. vendor that's actually right here with us. Oh dear. You can say hi really quick. Come on. Who is it? It's no one special. It's uh, Dr. Mike of Dr. Mike Shaving Emporium. Nice mustache. Hey, Dr. Mike. <laughs> Indeed. I've seen your setup. Where's the where's the top hat and the, the cape? Don't you typically have one of those? He's not doing steampunk today. Not today. I've got the hat in the car. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you should have that hat with you at all times. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that could almost be awkward, but uh, I, miss, I could certainly do that. I, can do that. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Awkward. <laughs> all that you're doing, this is incredible. Excellent. So we at least got some someone there on the scene, an artisan. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, got another Scott, YouTube show in just a minute, but as soon as we get him in here. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Say that. Say that again. I said we've got another uh, well-recognized face that's on his way. Hang on just a second. Excellent. Marty, can you see uh, David or Scott? They kind of dropped out on me. Um, David, it's been audio only for me from the beginning. It says. I see. And, tell uh, Dr. Mike. Scott looks like he. Froze. Tell Dr. Mike that there's some. Uh, Ronnie says hi. Ronnie Greer says hi. He's in the gallery. Oh, outstanding! Can you guys see your, yeah. see who's here? I can't see anybody. Oh, yeah, right now I only have. I only have audio only for for Scott, but I could see Marty and I could see Douglas just fine. Tell well, you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you Scotty uh, Scott, call yeah. me right back. All right, hang on. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm hey, stuck with only getting thing. to David, see I'm Douglas. Thing, so that's thing, pretty I'm scary. bouncing you. you. You just come right back in. All right. Okay. Show callers accept. There we go. <laughs> yeah. And who do we got Hi, there? I have a favor. No. <laughs> <laughs> they let anybody on the camera on that end, don't they? <laughs> yeah. What's up, everybody? No standards. James, you cut your hair. What's <laughs> Doing good, man. I did, actually. Look at that. Look at that. You got the little goatee happening now. You got to go. Yeah, yeah. You're, right, Scott. You're looking good. You've been working out, James? No, man. No. <laughs> Working nice. out my How you doing? <laughs> Yeah. Crunches. Nestle crunches. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're exactly. supposed to say. So you guys Let's looking stay. forward to a to a, a killer meetup tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Actually it's been uh for me it's been enjoyable just, you know, Darren letting us come by his house, seeing his oh, lovely yeah. children. He's got one of his daughters right here. Um, standing right next to me. We might give her. Um, she, you know, she saw the curiosity of like, oh, why are they staring at the computer? <laughs> so she's over here checking us out. Yeah. But My, we were all but there I, last I, I, time in that very same room. Yes, yep. that room. So it's not great. Yes. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. The room of secrets. 
Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Uh, for any of our watchers out there who don't know what, what's going on, really, they are standing in. They happen to be in Alabama for this shave meetup. They decided to stop by the Soap Commander compound, uh, secret compound, and they're in there right now. I don't know if you guys can, like, give us a little uh, circular view of, of the, what's going on right now or the factory, but uh, this is so, where all the magic uh, happens, folks. There we go. We have Banner back here. Steve right there. <laughs> uh, this table right here is where everything gets made. And we got all the storage shelves over here. <laughs> nice. With uh, some, I can't show you everything. Yeah. There's <laughs> there that I not show everything. But uh, <laughs> fair enough. That's why you're looking at <laughs> this way. <laughs> What I will say though, and what if you're reminding me of this last time I noticed when I was there is the the tin drop down ceiling they have. I love that. I absolutely want that for uh, my it's office fine. so that they can clean it. Yeah, it's just it's awesome. Yeah, it's it's a play on the that's, old tin ceiling. That's awesome. He's done a great yeah. job putting this yeah. all together. So, yeah, but I think I'm gonna sign off so we can uh, skid out a lot of here. And, Go to uh, that meetup, folks, and let them encourage but, you to have a bean up of your own. <laughs> all our viewers <laughs> out there. Great, have a Enjoy. great time, guys. Uh, we're we're all there in spirit, uh, and that's for Luke. Oh, hey. Darren, Darren, he's yes. I don't want to see this. That's he for went. Luke. That's for Luke. We're oh, the candle. Yeah, we're having a little vigil, and we're trying to get one happening all, all out there today, and uh, and shaved him, Darren. So we're with you. Oh, I'm so out of it. I don't know what's going on, but thank you so much for everybody. We appreciate you more than you know, more than you know. Thanks. Okay. And what can you say? Take yeah. it easy, guys. Have a great meetup without us. <laughs> Is that possible? Is that possible? Cyber strong. Oh, yeah. We're make it great without him. They're making it worse. <laughs> okay. We'll see you guys. Cheers. Take care, Scott. Oh, I guess I got to hang up on him. <laughs> oh, I got him. Okay, great. <laughs> Well, folks, okay, so that was us checking in in uh, Huntsville, Arizona, the, the Rocket City meetup. Um, I just got back myself from um, Shave by Shave West out in Austin, and that, I can say, was a flipping cool meetup. Every, uh, there was just so many folks there, so many great people. Uh, even Mantic was on the scene. And so um, it, it just it, very memorable for a meetup. Uh, and we have more coming up. We have, well, as you can see behind me, the Big Shave West is coming That's up right, very babe. shortly. In fact, I have posters. The official poster. <laughs> and I'll be selling these, I think, before the, the actual event. And I'll have some on the scene there. But I think I'm going to be probably selling for like 4 or $5 on the site. But they're, uh, you know, they're huge. They're 19 by 27. Pretty much going to be selling for cost. But, um yeah, it's our first year doing posters, and I thought it was uh, just something I'd open up to the public because I'm very excited about this event, and I can't wait for it to, to get here, you know? How about you guys? Big Shave West? <laughs> oh, man. You already know how I feel about the Big Shave West. <laughs> I'm excited about it, man. Castle it's going to be big. Castle going to be, be so there much. also. Who? Castle Forbes. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's just going to be yeah. so much bigger than last year. It's just going to be fun to watch. <laughs> and that's that's David Gonzalez, everybody. <laughs> now, what West about you, Marty? Now. Are you going to be making it to uh, the Big Shave West? I will not be. Um, I had had big plans on going, but then uh, work. We've got people going on a TDY right at that time, so my shift is down to me and one other guy. You'll you'll be missed. And now you know, really can't get the time off, so. We are going to be having a disappointment. We're going to be having. A, I was hoping to go to uh, the Austin meetup too, but wasn't meant to be. But you will be. Uh, we will be having a wet shavers roundtable on the scene there. Sorry, bro. We will what be having a wet up, shavers sorry. roundtable panel on the scene there. So that'll be part of the the round table, around, part of the meetup. Oh man! Um, with with people we typically don't have. We're going to have a uh, Rockwell Razors. Um, I'm trying to think of his name. I can't think of. One of the guys, Rockwell Braves, is going to be on the panel. Mantic's going to be on the panel. Uh, Nathan Clark, of course, will be on the panel. And, of course. Of and course. Uh, speaking of Nathan. You know, Nathan? Yeah, there he is. He's actually, and speaking also of Nathan, he sent me this. Not many people know this, but Nathan Clark makes soap, too. 
and he wanted my opinion on this. So uh, I'll be trying this out. If I know Nathan, he's watching. It's got to be the veg scent because he's the chosen one. He loves Actually, the veg. I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be trying that out. And so again, Nathan will be there. Nathan will be doing uh, demos, live turning demos of uh, brush handles, as well as teaching guys, people how to lather. Do you think he will allow me to to, to do something on that lathe? Because I want to turn a brush. Damn it! It's probably gonna. It's, Very cool. That'll be. I, I'm jealous of you guys. It's you guys probably gonna go, be hopefully next year. Shit, but I want to do it. I I, I really want to turn a brush. Well, you know, it's Damon's lathe. Damon's one bringing the lathe, so uh, you might be able to sweet talk. Oh, really? Down, I was like, man, that's got to no, be a pain. No, he thought he was too. But then he was like, I'm not going to be doing demo. I was like, no, 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 man, we got you covered. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> back to the map for him, and his crew will be uh, doing um, tune-ups for vintage razors too. So, if you're hearing this for the first time, bring your favorite vintage razor to the, the meetup as well, folks. We'll we'll get you tuned up there. So and there'll be more demos. We're trying to find a Honemeister. Uh, in fact, spread the word that I'm looking for a Honemeister there. I would love to have that, uh, someone on the scene there doing uh, honing for us um, and demonstrating their skills and getting their name out there. But we also have, uh, I'm trying to think, Vinny's Barbershop will be there on the scene doing free uh, straight razor shaves. So there's a lot of stuff going on. This is just on the, the perimeter of the, of the festival or the meetup as, as it happens as of yet. And every oh, day there are new people showing up and signing up signing on board so uh check out the website but as i mentioned earlier castle forbes is the most recent one to sign up what's that david and um just to go on what we're talking about with uh matt pasarsic how he's gonna have a film crew um i'm actually i invited a buddy of mine that he actually does like wedding videos and stuff along those lines so he's actually oh, cool. gonna bring his camera so we can have some additional footage and just kind of have some stuff going on there so we'll have a couple of vantage points for, for this year Great. Yeah, that's the, I'm glad you brought that up. So I'd like to do like a crowdsource type of film. So along with Matt doing what he's doing, um, I want to get, you know, anyone who films anything on their phone or if they have a nice camera, the quality really, it does <laughs> count, but more importantly, the content is what counts. So I encourage everyone there to video whatever they're seeing around them, and we'll try to splice that in at some point on the official film. So uh, we got that going on. Now, with, with that said, let's open up the hot seat. It looks like Marty just disappeared. Did he disappear on your end, too? Yeah, he's gone on my side. He was having, I was having issues with his feed from the beginning, though. Like, his sound was re really patchy for me. And um, so, I don't know. I, 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 I think Blab might be having an issue because we usually don't have these many little hiccups. Yeah, I think Marty's on his phone also. Marty, you on Probably your phone? Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, so I think it's that's one thing. That's happening. Okay, uh, gallery people. Is that are... you guys both dropped out? When I was here. <laughs> well, I know I'm here. Gallery people, we are opening up the hot seat. So uh, someone can jump in there. I know, Ronnie, you were interested in getting on. Uh, what do we got? Uh, okay, we have a question real quick. And it looks like Steve U44 is asking, would he's like, he'd like to get the Gillette Slim adjustable. Is eBay the way to go? eBay can be the way to go. Uh, you can also take a hunt for it in the wild at uh, antique stores, but that's getting harder and harder to pull off uh, nowadays. But I've I've never really had bad luck on eBay. When I have, I've been able to work it out with the seller right away. So what do you guys think? And let's pull Ronnie into the conversation. Um, eBay is not right. Uh, you can find a good find there. Um, my personal go-to guy is Mike McKinley. Hey Facebook. Ronnie! I, hey guys! That's my vintage razor guy. There we go. Ronnie, do you have headphones? Um, yeah, I have to grab them. Yeah, right here. Yeah. So, yeah, anyone out there who's going to be hopping in today, please uh, bring some headphones along as well, else it creates this really psychedelic echo chamber type thing, which I believe David just demonstrated earlier. <laughs> no, that that was a. I, I, don't some new whack I really didn't think stuff. I really didn't think things through, and I actually, uh, while I was waiting for my computer to restart, I had the show on my phone as well. When they both got onto the same screen, all hell broke loose. So. Okay. Yeah, it was like this audio. Figure. I'm sorry. Sorry to cut you off, Marty. What were you saying about eBay? Oh, just that. Um, yeah, eBay. I, I found some decent finds there, um, but usually for vintage razors, I go through uh, Mike McKinley at least until I understood the market well enough. And he's always been fair to me. And now knowing the market better, I know when to find a good find on eBay, mainly with like SE razors. You can find some really good deals. Totally. And you can, you know, and it's what you search for too. I always like search vintage 
and then VTG, Bakelite, Safety Razor, traditional sh- I, all d- different tags I use, and different things will pop up. Um, Rare works really well as well. So uh, and buy buy it now. I always select that rather than looking at auction stuff. I don't really like to bid on stuff. Uh, just it's much work involved. What about you, Ronnie? Any any uh, advice on picking up a safety razor or a straight razor or a Chevette even on eBay? Uh, you know, I really haven't used eBay much, um, so I can't speak to that. Um, I've been more in the BST. I've been a lot in the forums and, and picking up stuff and just kind of combing through. And every time I think I'm going to not buy anything for a while, something just jumps out at me. And it's, oh, it's only a couple of bucks. <laughs> and so I just grabbed a um, uh, classic samurai uh, Chevette, which oh, is nice. interesting. I've seen it in, in the uh, in Chevette world before a few times. So I picked that up. Of course, I've got the Ibis that I'm going to shave with in the morning. And I wanted to ask you, sir, how did you name that thing? Where did that come from? The Ibis. Uh, well, Egyptian mythology, first off. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's that. There's also, I don't know if you read in the write-up. Well, I mean, there's a whole Phoenix artist and accoutrement universe right, that I've been right. working on for the last couple of years. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of, I, I went with the Phoenix, Arizona thing, not thinking about the rising from the ashes thing. So now I'm with you, Douglas. Okay, because I've got a Griffin yeah. tattooed on my arm that I got when I was 18. So um, that goes yeah. way back to me too, yeah. So I got exactly. that. Ibis. There's a whole. You know, I try to keep it like secret. I like. I try to see what people discover for themselves. And uh, you know, sometime down the road, I'll I'll explain why it's there, what it's all about, and so on and so forth. But uh, right. yeah, and Phoenix. Yeah, not only did it rise from the ashes, a- ashes soda. I mean, ash is what you create lye out of, or what you can use in place of lye when you're creating soap too. So uh, there's a lot of things going on there. And then there's of course the Arizona reference as well. So. Is it multi levels of depth when it comes to anything in the Phoenix universe, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just Sorry. Uh, I got that I got that thing and and boy, I, I I mean I posted the picture, you saw it. I said this thing it's just fantastic to look at. I'm gonna shave with it in the morning for the first time. Um and I'm Feels looking good, forward to it. Like gonna... Yeah, yeah, it's it's it, to me it's it's like the crown king light. I hate to say that, but you know, it kind of it's no, got it's... that crown king feel to it, and yet at the same time it, yeah. it's different and I really like it. Uh, the Crown King is great, but you know it's it's very weighty. So this thing will be nice to try also, and I'm uh, really looking forward to that. It's just got such a nice polished look to it, um, and and I just I, I can't say enough about it. I just love it. So I uh, look forward to sharing with that. I got the Perma Sharps to go with it. So you know, the, yeah, oh, I mean, sweet. I've been waiting to use those. I mean, finally some different blades, and uh, I loaded a blade just a couple minutes ago, and it was just it was a breeze to load. So um, really, really good stuff. Nice. I'm going to be using my. Uh, Soap Commander Vision. I used this, the Vision bath soap for a very long time. I've been using that exclusively in the shower. So I'm looking forward to using the Vision shave soap and the aftershave balm with it as well um, tomorrow. So I'll, I'll uh, be posting pictures of that in the morning uh, very early before I go to work. And so that's great. Very cool. And uh, Ronnie, what, what, what exactly inspired your whole uh, push for the Chevette world? Uh, you're like one of the you know, one of the representatives of the Chevette world. Uh, what, what brought you into that side? Yeah, you, you seem story. to be really into them. What got, what got you that side? Uh, you know, David, I just got so um, – I got beat down with the, with the straight race and keeping up with the with the maintenance. Even now, I mean, I, I keep debating if I'm going to uh, get rid of my straights, and I don't. But um, but the Chevette, to me, I, I just – I find it a lot easier to work with. I, I didn't like a DE. Um, interestingly enough, I just picked up a couple recently – kind of going back that way a little bit. But the, the, to me, the DE was always hard to find the angle and, and the guard got in the way, especially under the nose. That's a real son of a gun, you know. So um, I like my Chevettes. And like I said last time when I was on when, with Douglas, um, when you talk about Chevettes, if somebody brings it up in the group and they say, hey, guys, I wanted to try this, you know, the, the first thought from the person wanting to try it is that it's an express route to using a straight razor. Um, but really it's not. And so people chime in and say, you know, that. And then they also say, you know what, Screw that. Just get a straight razor and the Chevette is not the thing to do and yada, yada, yada. And so I wanted to make a place where we could talk about straights without getting shouted down and talked out of it and all this kind of stuff. And so, you know, I mean, I got a couple people in there and now we're up to about 110. Um, we got people from, you know, different parts of the world as well, not just in the U.S. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, I haven't given up on the straight, but I've put it aside for quite some time now. And, um, you know, maybe I'll return to it at some point. I've got my uh, auto shaving straight that I really like. Um, and I probably have about a dozen straight races at this point. So, 
you know, and, and probably as many Shevets, if not more. Um, and I still want to get that um, that Il, uh, uh, Irving Barber Company, that IBC. It's a little bit pricey, but I've been seeing that in the groups a lot. It takes several different kinds of blades. It's very versatile in, in that regard. Yeah. So I'm looking at that. There's also there's, there's a gentleman by the name of Don J. McClarty. McCarty. Um, he does uh, custom Chevettes. Really? And they're they're expensive, but the 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 way his uh, blade holder is, it can hold both DE blades and also I believe the the feather the feather art feather oh, artist club blades. Right. Yeah, and and they're just probably sty stylistically wise and probably craftsmanship. They're probably the best I've ever seen. Again, they're pricey. Is Don J D O N G J A E. You can even find him on Instagram as well. And he's actually, he posts once in a while in the in the groups. And it's something you just might want to check out because, yeah, they're very high-end uh, Chevettes. And it might just be something that you're interested in. It's a, it's a real collector's type of piece. Okay, yeah. I'm going to check that out. Yeah, gonna check that out. A group Chevette maybe eventually. I think it's really cool uh, that you created this sanctuary, if you will, for the Chevette too. And also it became like you you have this identity now, Ronnie. You know, we have our DE guys. We have our straight rears guys. Finally, we got our shave that guy, and I think that's really cool too. Yeah, but no, I appreciate that, David. If you get any information, if you have anything to share, um, please send that my way. I'll be looking at that. And yeah, Douglas Group Shavet. Uh, let me see what he's got there. Um, oh wow, that's that's something. Oh. Yeah, and that's one of his more basic models. That's one of his more basic models right there. That's one of his le less well, expensive ones. He goes full custom to where he could do the bronze scales with all custom engraving. And whatnot. Let me see if I can find some more fancy stuff. What's here. on the tang there? Is that like a little charm? What is that, David? This one is a charm. This this one right here. This that that that's an actual charm. That's a custom made charm. Yeah. Um. That uh, that whole group shivat thing. That's something I had thought about, Douglas. But you know, uh, I mean, maybe down the road, it's it's kind of yeah difficult. Uh, here's a, here's a sure. Well, maybe I can make something happen in the future, Ronnie. We'll yeah. we'll talk more about yeah, that. Yeah, on the road, I'm I'm, I'm sure. I'm uh, right now. I'm I'm thinking about you know that Maggard's meetup. I'm so excited about that. Um, you know that'll be in in Michigan, of course, and that's my first um, really distance meetup. I've gone to them in New York several times, and um, really that's been about it. So couldn't make uh, Chicago. I'm not gonna be able to do that. I'm really kind of bummed about that. Oh, that's too bad. That's gonna be epic. Oh, you know, they're all great meetups at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, so as long as you can make one, that's something, you know, something at least. But Chicago, I know I have to buy tickets still to get there. But I'm, it's already, you know, it's tough because right when I get through with a meetup, I can start thinking about not what I'm doing in front of me, but the next meetup. So it's like, you know, you can't stop. Like, it's always another one coming up. Yeah, um, but it's and you're always prepared. For the next one. <laughs> yeah, but I tell you, I mean, when I went to that last one in New York, it's just it's just like such a high. And, and you just look oh, at all these products and you, I'm just grinning from ear to ear and picking stuff up and smiling for the camera. And Joe's there taking video and stuff. And I mean, when you leave, you're just floating, you know, you just can't even walk on the ground. It's just fantastic. Yeah. They don't last long enough either. You know, no. you need like a week weekend length of meetup where you hang out for a few hours each day. Chicago is a lot like that because we were all there for almost a week. Yeah. Uh, a lot of us anyways. And then more people would show up day after day. So we kept doing these group activities up until the meetup to the point where the meetup didn't even feel like the meetup. It just felt, it was like the later party, you know, the, the, like field day at the end of the school year because we'd already spent so much time together. It was one big meetup. Uh, really, you know, that's what I like about a lot of these meetups where there's a lot of people coming in from out of town. But what's that? That's really interesting. That one right here. So the style of this guy's blade holder, it's actually a similar to like a Phoenix Artist Club that you actually like squeeze to drop a blade in. And yeah. this this Tough. fits the the persona, the persona style longer blades, the feather pro and the half a cut double edge ones. And of course, that again, that's a fully fully engraved custom uh, uh, holder itself right there. And then, of course, the, the scales comes in a bunch of different materials and shapes and whatnot. Yeah, that's that's really something. How'd you find that, David? Um, before I, I got into the shave community, uh, before before I got into the shave community on the fa Facebook groups, I was much more active on Instagram. And also, before I got into wet shaving, I was actually already into barbering. So chevettes were a little bit more of my my beginning to wet shaving because obviously, in cutting hair you use chevettes to do all the edge work and whatnot for, for cutting hair. 
So I had probably like about three, four, or five, even maybe even six Chevettes before I ever picked up a regular straight. Yeah. Um, so that was just I got involved with a lot of he does like a lot of custom engraving work. Um, you guys are probably not super familiar with uh, uh, barber tools, but there's a uh, an all metal machine called the Andes Master. And he also does like custom engraving for an Andes master. So that's getting really popular amongst barbers, at least here in California. I think Atlanta, that's real popular. Some in Florida and whatnot. Um, barbering is real mainstream in certain areas, areas or regions in the country. So these barbers are making a lot of money. And with that extra money they're making, they're getting a lot of custom tools done. So it's just, it's just a lot more popular now. Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, I just met this company, the startup company when I was in Austin last week. Um, in fact, there's, they're, they're on the fifth floor at the Quincy hotel where the president just was in Austin. Um, I was led into the room where he was like two days before. So I'm like, and they were like, yeah, this is the coffee he was drinking and stuff like that. It was really neat. But aside from that, um, there's this company, startup company called Jag for men. And they're a group of barbers pretty much. And they're recruiting more barbers across the country that will do house calls or events or whatnot. If you want your haircut, why don't you give them a call and they show up with their bag of tricks and, um, and one of their detailing uh, tools is the Chevette. They're really pushing that. Uh, so I thought that was neat seeing the Chevette come back because typically barbers don't use them much anymore, you know? So it was really, really interesting to see. Well, yeah, I, I really think it's a regional thing because, again, barbering is so big here. That whole house call that you're doing there, a lot of barbers around my area are nothing but personal barbers or will only cut your hair by appointment only. Like, right. I don't have a haircut now. Obviously, I'm a hairy beast, but my barber, he actually – has cut hair as recently for members of the Dodgers. You know, he, he's done, he's been doing personal house calls for yeah. a long time and it, it, it's a big business. I mean, I love the, the barber, barber culture. I call it uh, the, the cool barber shops, you know, with the, all the tattooed barbers and the, they're sh serving a little brandy as you wait, you know, just a pl that classic barber shop that you'd hang out as a guy. Uh, I like to see that coming back, but I also like the idea of a house call too. That's kind of neat also. So, um, yeah, we can tell. <laughs> Ronnie and I spend yeah, a lot of time on the shops. Nice. Uh, yeah, blow dryers, all that pretty stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we got Mantic in the in the forum also. We got Mantic in the gallery. We got some, yeah. a little bit of conversation happening there. <laughs> so moving right along with um, you know the um, the current current affairs and shaved them. What else we got, guys? I've been seeing a lot of stuff. Um, well, personally, I've been seeing a lot of stuff uh, coming out of the Bailey camp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bailey's back, three videos a day, it seems. Uh, With the vengeance, he has just totally become – he's completely relapsed when it came to making videos. Before, he was trying to just test the waters, and now he has just gone ass crazy – we're making videos. Yeah, but you got to love Leroy, boy. Leroy always gets in there, and I just can't get enough of him. I keep thinking I'm going to bring my girls in there because I have two dogs, but I just never seem to get around to it. I've been so busy. But I've got – I've got dog. a tin of the beach that is unused that I've got to do a video with. I've been waiting and waiting, and I've got my little Seinfeld clip queued up, ready to go in iMovie. Just slip in my clip there with the beach. And, oh, man, so look for that hopefully soon. I hope for that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, tis the season. It's getting warmer out. It's time for the beach. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Oh, we got I have guys. actually two pups of the beach. I got, I got the original version, the 1.0 beach, and I have the 2.0 version of, of beach. Yeah, I have the uh, the original How to Grow a Mustache in the huge metal tin. So um, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that you can't go through that too fast. No, no. <laughs> okay, what else we got? Uh, yeah, there, there's a small group of us. I don't know how many. When you're talking about things in the community right now, we're doing a monogamous march. Yeah, you're out of your damn mind. So using one soap for the entire month. So yeah, it's uh. I have gone the entire month with this one soap. I have received soap since then, have not used them. I've only used Soap Commander Respect the entire month, and I'm weighing it too. I started off with the whole package, and it was seven ounces with the lid and everything, you know, soap in the whole container. Wow. And it's down to 5.2 ounces heavy and 13 shaves. So, yeah, just yeah, oh yeah, I definitely am. I well, that and it doesn't help. Yeah, Most of my knots mean. are 28, 29, 30 millimeters, you know. So I'm at a little 22 inch or 22 millimeter, nice, nice. you know. I see, uh, a 24, but I like the big knots. I was talking about the Wishi. Um, yeah. 
And I just want to say the Wishi at the Wishi for me, it's time has come. Uh, get the Micro Touch One, which is pretty much they're using the same mold as the Wishi, but I think a better metal, a heavier metal. And um, with the the silo doors are actually of a better quality, at least of the Wishi I have, which is more flimsy and kind of almost made out of tin foil. So I say go for the Micro Touch One, coming out of the same factory, I'm sure, but they're using a better metal. So that's what I'd like to add to that. Get going there. Question for Marty. How did you break your foot, Marty? <laughs> uh, well, there's a couple stories. Uh, one story out there is I was playing rugby. Another one, I was rescuing an infant child from being eaten by an alligator. Um, but the real story is I really just stepped off a curb, wrong, rolled my foot, fell down, and uh, fractured my fifth metatarsal. So aye, about aye, two aye. months in a cast and about a month in a walking boot. But just, doing, just learning how to uh, do random things around the house on crutches, how to carry things, you know, going to the grocery store. I get to <laughs> go to Target now and ride around those little motorized hate. carts. So, okay. You know. what, what else? <laughs> what else is going on in the carts that you've noticed? There seems like there's been a lot of... I, Wanted to do a podcast a couple of weeks ago to cover. It seemed like a lot of stuff was passing me by. Um, what have you guys noticed currently? I'm seeing a lot of new people in, in my group that are new to wet shaving in general, which is really nice. Um, you know, and they, I mean, the basic questions about brushes and soaps. And uh, there was a big discussion about how to use the brush. I don't know if you saw that, any of you guys. Do you do you do circular motions? Do you do a painting? Oh, I did, or the figure eight. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and Gio always talked about the figure eight and, you know, there's this, is my brush going to last forever? And people said, my br your brush won't last two seconds if you don't do it this way. And, you know, Simpsons always talked about using only a painting motion. And um, yeah. I, to me, the whole thing is nuts. I mean, I've been doing this thing for about three years. I use my brushes. I watch people like Esposito just ground that thing into his face, you know, and, and, and that's what you do. I mean, you use the brush and it's not going to last 100 years, I wouldn't imagine. It doesn't need to last 100 years. But I think people put a lot uh, too much thought into that. Um, do what works for you. And I think a combination of all those, I, I can't imagine just painting it on. And that brings up another question that I had is that if you go to a barber, they get that warm lather out of the dispenser, for example, and they just put it right on your face. Do they not, um, you know, kind of massage it into the hairs? How does that whole thing work? Typically, well, a good barber will put it on your face first and then put a hot towel over that okay. to prep your skin before the shave. And they'll leave that on there for a few minutes, then take that off, and then reapply lather to the face. That's what I've seen from quality barbers. Right. That's how they prep it. I mean, and they'll also massage your face too, uh, depending on who the barber is. Um, what about you, David? You seem to be tapped into that. I'm sorry. What was the question? I'm having some issues with my phone over here. My apologies. Um, whether or not how barbers prep your face before a shave, what have you seen? Um. Often, it is, well, if you get a good barber, uh, the probably the most commonly used uh, way to start prepping your face would be through a hot towel. Uh, they'll have a, 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 a towel warmer, or some people will just pour hot water over a towel, uh, wring it out a bit. They'll fold, they'll fold it, and then wrap it around your face. Let it sit there for for a bit, and then uh, apply a thin layer of like a hot lather shaving cream that they'll have right there, and they'll go from there. And it's usually just a single pass. They usually won't do more than one pass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, back to the brushes or where um, I, I like to relate that to um, skateboarding. You know, when you grow up skateboarding, some there's some people out there that we call them posers at the time that would keep their board in pristine condition. They wouldn't really skate on it. It had to be perfect looking. And it's the same thing with brushes. You know, I like to break my brush in. I like to be a little bit rough with it. And you know what? I, I, I care about the shave. I don't care about how long the brush is going to last, you know, 20 years from now. If you do treat it a little rough, you are going to destroy the brush, but we're here to shave. And um, sometimes you're going to load yeah. it like you hate it. And I use, and that's why, you know, I switched to synthetics too. I don't have to think about taking care of them as much. They travel really well and they, yeah. you don't really have to worry about destroying yeah. the hairs. Yeah. I'm loving uh, my synthetics. Figure I just, eight motion. I think that works for me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you're right. I remember the Simpsons saying painted on. That was just to take care of the bristles. And Simpsons, I mean, granted, you're paying 150 bucks, 200 bucks for one of their nuts. Yeah, so you are going to probably follow their instructions a little bit better than a synth. But, I mean, um, painting on, one of those uh, the only reason I see or is. value I see out of painting on a lather is if you're using a... David? 
I can't hear him. Um, oh, but what oh, I was going to say is the only, reason I see, the only value I see in painting on a lather is if you're using a pre-shave oil and you don't want to mix it in with the lather. Yes. So you would yeah. just you know mix it up in another bowl and then paint it on top of that oil so you get less oil on the bristles. Um, but that's just me. Whatever works for anybody out there. But I, I don't I, don't go too delicate with those brushes unless, unless you drop $300 on it. Uh, another thing I've seen is exfoliating too. Have you seen those, these, Ronnie? A lot of people are having conversations about exfoliation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's to me. Uh, that's again goes back to the brush, the the circular motions, the figure eight and stuff. I mean, I don't think about that word necessarily, but you know, you're kind of stimulating your your beard a little bit and raising up the hairs and maybe getting rid of some dead skin and just kind of massaging. Because to me, if you just paint it on, it's not really doing anything. Of course, if you paint it on and then you put a hot towel on it, that's a different story. But I feel like if you just kind of just go back and forth a little bit with the brush. You're not going to get a great shave. I'm not going to get a great shave. I know that because the the you know it hasn't had a chance to set into my face. You know I don't know how else to put it. Totally. I mean, and honestly, I don't think you really have to worry about exfoliating other than just using your brush. Exfoliation is a byproduct of using the brush, creating a lather on your face. I wouldn't go that crazy with it. When you go really crazy with exfoliation, you're taking away your skin's natural oils. And now yeah. you're opening up another door for, I mean, dry skin, eczema, so on and so forth. Some people go absolutely nuts. And um Again, the brush is already doing that for you, so I wouldn't overthink exfoliation people. But I, yeah, I have exactly. seen this coming up a lot in the forums. Yeah, like so you said, just put the brush on there and move the lather around and shave, and that's it. And that's yeah, the goal is exactly. to take the hair off your face and, and, and make it an enjoyable experience, and you look good and you feel good. I mean, I, I start off my day like that, and it, it just goes uphill from there. You can't beat it. So. And it's one of those things that um, a lot of people switch to wet shaving to help limit irritation because they're – Get getting beat up by the cartridge razors and the use it, overusing your brush is really going to help you get on your way to irritating your skin. And that, that's a good point, David. And I have to sometimes remember that myself because sometimes I'm trying to build a lather so much on my face. I may be going a little bit overboard. I've gone away from the bowl lathering. So that's a good thing to keep in mind, depending on the kind of brush you have. Some of them are a little more scritchy than others. Uh, like Douglas said, the synthetics right now are all the rage for me, that Plasson style knot. It's just fantastic. There's no maintenance. There's no pre-soaking. You just throw some water on there. You shake it off. You put your soap on, and you're ready to go. And then at the end, the thing is dry in no time, and they travel really well. And um, so, you know, I don't give a lot of thought. Yeah. I still really can't warm up to the to the face feel of synthetics the same way. Right. They just they don't they don't feel like badger brushes, and I just prefer how badger brushes feel. It's just plain and simple. Yeah. They are easier to use. You probably don't have to practice as much or really take a lot of effort to use, but the, just the general face feel just, it, it does, doesn't do it for me. That, that's true. When I, when, I, I really think, you know, when I lather my head, I try to use a, a, a stiffer brush, a badger, uh, more so on, on my head because that works a lot better, especially if I've got some growth on there too. That, that synthetic is not going to, you know, give me the same feel on my head for sure. I see Christian is talking oh. about an exfoliating soap um, and things like that. So I, I see that also in the, in the gallery there. I have used the exfoliating soap. Um, I got sent that kit from Paul Mall Barbers, and they have an exfoliating, uh, like pre uh, like a uh, soap to use before you shave. And even though I'm not one for scrubs to use them, it did leave a nice face feel afterwards. I, again, I really don't need extra exfoliation aside from the brush. But at the end of the day, if those are the type of things that you like, um, that Paul Mall Barber one was pretty nice though. The scent was really good and um, left my skin feeling really soft. So yeah. Guys, really quick, I you is anyone out there having problems hearing either myself, David, Ronnie, or Marty, or seeing us even? I don't know if it's my connection because I'm the one running the whole show, or if it's their individual connections. But I can't see either I've anyone been, <laughs> but myself. I, I personally have been struggling seeing and hearing Marty. Half of the time when he's talking, I can't. It, it's like cutting from me. That I don't. Yeah, again, I don't know if that's just my connection. I'm doing great, but I've been struggling with Marty's. Can you hear me now? Marty, are you there? Yeah, I can hear you. I, I, can, I just can't can you hear see me? you guys. I can hear you. Yep, I can hear you. I can hear you. Um, okay, I got Ronnie back. Okay. <laughs> all right, I'm going gonna, uh, gonna to open up my seat because I, I have to go grab some chow, and then I have to get up really early in the morning, so I'm going to give that up to somebody else. But it was fantastic being on. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys. And um, I look forward to uh, – Seeing you guys again next week and in, in the forum. Hey, it was nice seeing you. Sure. Nice seeing you running us again, Ronnie. See you later. And, and, and David, oh, it was great to have you on board. The, what about the auto shaving brush? Any any movement on that? Can we get that thing going to the East Coast or what? Dude, I had that shit and 
when we're talking about it, it was one of the times I got sick. It's actually right here too. Let me see. I can't see him though. Is this camera working on your end, Ronnie? <laughs> Yeah, I see. I could see him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, and uh, yeah. So we got to get that thing going. I had that razor. You, you expressed an interest, and I don't know if you still want it or not. But uh, you know, send me a message. Yeah, we'll check it out. Yeah, because I told dude I got sick. I've been having a an epidemic of sorts uh, these last couple months. I've been sick probably like a half dozen times in the last two months. Uh, so it's been throwing me off completely. But yeah, I'll be in contact with you. Okay. All right, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna punch out. See Take it easy, Ronnie. I see Mantic Take out there. Mantic, hop on in if you if you want. Seats open. I do want to apologize for last week, folks. Uh, we um we were off the air last <laughs> week. We had a show scheduled with Nathan Clark, and last minute David got sick, and Scott was caught up in something a personal family affair type thing. So the show didn't happen. I myself was on the scene at a meetup in Austin, so I couldn't do anything about it. But I want to apologize for that. Uh, in the future, that will not happen. We, we, we're typically good with stuff like that. We have someone always waiting in the wings uh, since our panel is so huge when it comes to past panelists of the uh, roundtable and whatnot. So uh, I'd like to apologize. <laughs> so does David. <laughs> I can't hear him. I don't know if he's apologizing or not. I don't know if this penance. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, but yes. So again, I still have my my candle burning here, and I encourage everyone out there. Your shaves of the day, uh, Cybert strong. Also, let's burn a candle for Luke. Let's keep him in our thoughts. Yeah, and whatever you know, one way to help them out is just just buying one of their soaps or donating to the cause. And if you'd like to do that, Luke'sFund.com is one of the many places you can do that. It's lukesfund.com. And please share that too. I made it really easy to remember that domain name. So um, again, it will be right here once I edit it, edit the show. But until then, lukesfund.com. Share that with the interweb. And uh, let's get that out there. And let's let's take care of our, our, wet sh- our extended wet shaving family at Soap Commander. So what else we got? Thanks Mark? to those guys who have set up uh, I just yes. want to thank the guys who have set up those funds too. Like Arlie set up the GoFundMe. I think it was Speak set up um, what he's doing. Uh, you know, so thanks to those guys for taking that step and getting those things started because it's a huge cause. Yes. Yep. Any little bit helps. Uh, I can't. Ex- I can't. Can't say that enough. Anything you can give helps. So what else do we have going on in Shave World, Marty? What else have you noticed? Um, one of, earlier, somebody mentioned in there um, on the feed down below about artisans kind of going out of business. You know, we've had, you know, what, three or four, you know, in the last month or so um, that was talked about for a couple of weeks, I would say, where people were, is this the end or not kind of thing? Yes, we've we've been talking about that. I think the issue. Go on, David. It, it's just um, I think a lot of people forget that this is a hobby. <laughs> for a lot of the individuals involved, including a lot of the artisans. And yeah, it was a, it was a real, the sky's falling moment for a lot of people. Um, I think a lot of those people closing down, it's just a matter of not being able to have the time and being able to keep up with the demand and the demand in their time, um, taken away from their family and the regular work life. So, you know, everybody relax. (laughs) Yep. And Mantic is with us today. (laughs) Howdy. Can you hear me? All right. How's it going, Mantic? Gotcha. Mark, what are your thoughts on that? On uh, the sky is falling and shaved them. Well, you know, it kind of kind of seemed that way for for a week, didn't it? Uh, it just I understand that artisans come and go, but they usually don't come and go all at once. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> the way I interpret it, though, is uh, almost like when one goes, they give the others that are maybe thinking about it permission suddenly to go public with it. And I think that's, I think it was more of a psychological thing happening at the time. Uh, just from where you I'm know, You can relate it to, I'd relate it to the brush makers. If you remember about a year or so ago, we had so many, uh, what was it, like three or four brush makers all at once said, no more customs, I'm only doing stock. Because one person did it and they're like, they talked to them, hey, my life's easier now. You know, I can focus on my task and not have all these interruptions. So I think it's probably a lot of the same kind of feeling. Yeah. I would have to agree. Yeah. Yeah. It was like Scott Pavkovich and, and of course Matthew Martin did it like all, all at like the same time. And, you know, it yeah. seems to come in waves too. First there'll be software, if you will, with the creams and soaps and they'll, 
they'll kind of stabilize for a while and then hardware will change suddenly. Uh, and, and my prediction that is going to be the next wave is, is another wave of hardware changes. Uh, I, have, I have some teasing news that I can give everyone. I can't, oh, say, I can't say details right now because I'm under non-disclosure, but I can say probably within a month that there will be two new adjustable safety razors from uh, brands that you will recognize. Very nice. cool. Nice, nice. Wet Shavers Roundtable exclusive <laughs> information right there, baby. That's right. <laughs> that is awesome. I, I don't know what, but I, I got to get a job working for a carbologist <laughs> over here. <laughs> it pays really well. <laughs> are you are you, are, are you hiring? Because, man, I'll, I'll be your assistant, your lackey. <laughs> I am. I do. I do uh, hire uh, 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 freelancers to write for the site. Keyword is free. There you go. There we yeah, go. he didn't well, look. David <laughs> read or write, so it really doesn't do you much good. <laughs> Claymation, but uh, Mark, you were there uh, at the Austin at the uh, Shave by Shave West. Yeah. How was it? Uh, what, what was your What was your take on it? Um, I, I was I was hoping for a few more people, quite frankly, uh, given the size of the area but it was a really enthusiastic group. And I think it's just generally cool that a lot of people can get together and have a great time over something as seemingly random as shaving. <laughs> I mean, all these people had gotten together and were doing all this great stuff with uh, <laughs> uh, you know, some, obviously some vendors there, some pay it forwards, some uh, exchanges were going on, just a lot of great conversations. And in the case of the, the pub we were in, I thought they had some great food. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, here we are uh, uh, talking about, of all things, shaving. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You had, we had our own little room for our viewing audience out there. And so you'd have people from the bar just checking in every now and then to see what was going on. Because on the chalkboard, it said wet shavers meetup or something to that regard. And so we definitely created a little bit of a buzz and maybe even a consciousness around wet shaving by just being there. But yeah, they had great beer too. I was there. It was supposed to go from noon to four and I was there till probably about 10 at night. I'm always the last guy at these meetings. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm at the wrong meeting after now that I think about it. But uh, yeah, we were there. We closed up the bar, I think around 10 and then, uh, then went our separate ways, but it was probably about like four of us left there just talking about wet shaving. Adam from Stubble Trouble. Adam, if you're out there, that was his first meetup, I believe, and he was on the scene with his soaps as well. I walked out of there with, I think, three of his soaps. Yeah, I've, uh, I've got I walked one, out too. A lot of stuff. Yeah, good stuff, great sense. Um, there were a lot of, like, artisans that were represented there. I wish I created a list. I'll, I'll announce them next week who was there, but, I mean, I walked out of there with, like, it was like Halloween for me or Christmas <laughs> with the amount of product I, I left with. <laughs> and Mentic, are you going to make it up to the yes. Big Shave West? I will be at, uh, actually, and I might as well announce that here, too, uh, I'll be at both the Big Shave West and ShaveCon, and in between, uh, I'm going to spend the entire week in right. California and go visit some of these uh, wet shaving uh, uh, businesses, for lack of a better word, uh, West Coast Shaving, Royal Shave, Men Essentials. I'm going to try maybe to get up to uh, San Francisco to see Bevel. Uh, and take some video and, and meet some of these people for future uh, Sharpologist articles and YouTube videos and things like that. But yeah, I'm actually planning to spend quite a bit of time in Southern California, or California anyway, uh, next month uh, for wet shaving. That's great. Um, I happen to live just in the middle of all those places. If you have a, fr a free moment, man, uh, drop me a message. We'll, we'll oh, grab cool. A drink great. Or yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because like Royal Shave just opened right. their storefront um, about a month and a half ago. They're in uh, Santa Ana, I believe, and they're probably about that's probably about twenty minutes away from, oh, really? from my house. Okay. My house. So, yeah, I've been meaning to go check yeah. them out too. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, I will say one thing that disappointed me about um, the last meetup in Austin is, is Charles Roberts wasn't there. Um, oh. And for yeah, I found his store though, Mantic. I was in the wrong location oh, you did. before, but the day, okay. the day that I left, I'm pretty sure it was on the corner of Six. Uh, yeah, Six in Congress. Yeah, I right across from the Blue Cafe or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but it had that big statue in front of the place. Ah, uh, I was just peering in the window, imagining what it would have been like. Uh, so Ashante, I did locate it. Um, 
and I'm sad in the fact that I, I could not get in there and Charles is no longer with us. Yeah. But all in all, it's, it was a hell of a week. It was a hell of a meetup, and I'm looking forward to these upcoming meetups as well. And what so you're what doing, you think Delvin, of Sixth Street on in Austin? I saw you. I saw the one uh, the one uh, post you did on Facebook with uh, with the uh, the street uh, people walking up and down. Uh, <laughs> welcome madness. to Austin. Huh? Absolute yeah, I, it was absolute madness. And uh, and at night, it's even more maddening. <laughs> I thought I was at Mardi Gras. I accidentally got off the bus too early. And I couldn't find my way back to the conference center. So I was walking up and down the street through all of, like the thick of like every, just wildness, just debauchery, absolute debauchery. <laughs> I mean, like you only need one drum set on the street. They had four drum sets on the street facing each other at one point. And it was just like, and I'm trying to talk to my phone, figure out where I am. I, it was just crazy. And I was over it. By that time, I, I spent the, you know, the last six days there. And now I'm like walking around. It was like one of those scenes in the movie where you're just like, it seems like the main character is on a skateboard just gliding through the crowd, like over it. That's how I was. Or, like, or a soldier that's been in combat too long with the thousand <laughs> thousand yard stare. Yes, that was me. It was just like, I was, I'm still <laughs> recovering, you know? It was like a traumatic stress disorder. It was, it was Austin. Something to be said about Austin, let me tell you folks. And South by Southwest. I mean, like that, I can't wait to do it again next year. There's no way to prepare yourself for it unless you've already been there the year before. Cause I mean, it's just, it's, it's a wild time. How did and the they movie premiere these, uh, go? The movie for uh, yeah. uh, Hollywood Shorties, uh, Ryan Seaman Green's film, went excellent. I mean, they, we walked in there. He was looking for distribution. He left there with like 10 business cards of distributors that are interested in the movie and him. Um, so he's got representation now. Hopefully at this point he's got distribution. But it was a huge success. People loved the film. Uh, it was just it was something else. I feel very privileged to be a part of that and to experience that. Um and so that said, I mean, like we, I went there to South by Southwest for the for the films and whatnot. I didn't think that as a soap maker there was be anything there for me really at all. But there was. There were conferences on scent. There was a guy doing a book signing on a book that he just wrote on sense of smell, scent of smell, uh, sense of smell, so on and so forth. I missed this though. I found out this after the fact at another like they were having different meet and greets and meetups all throughout the festival. And um, it, oddly enough, on one on virtual reality that I was attending. This guy was there with his book on sense, telling about what I missed. So there was that. There's also great, you know, all different types of organizations or startup companies that were, are doing like barber stuff or um, men's grooming products. They were there as well. So I got to pass up my business card and network a little, but I wasn't really prepared for it because I just didn't expect that to be there. So uh, I'm, you know, glad who I was able to catch up with some of the people or to meet some of the people that I did. But um, next year it's going to be a whole different animal for me. I'm going to be totally, totally prepared for that one. But um, and in a lot of you know a lot of great barbershops, I would get to pop in and like you know say hi to some folks or to pass my business card. So it was very rewarding. I think I'm getting callbacks now and emails. So I think it was it was just a hugely successful mission on many fronts. <laughs> and I can't wait to get back to Texas. And the next meet, what were we saying, Mantic? Houston? Is that what we left off at? Somebody was mentioning Houston, and somebody else was mentioning San Antonio. San Antonio, yeah. I saw the San Antonio, but I remember being on the scene there, and they were saying Houston at the time. But uh, but now I'm. But I don't think San that'll Antonio's happen until uh, late fall. Right. Well, thank God. I need to again recuperate from this last one. Jeez. And then with everything else coming up, like Shave by Shave West is going to be. It's just the whole thing is going to be insane. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm also looking forward to your videos. Um, it's just going to be great. You know, couldn't have a better person on the ground there. <laughs> Well, folks, we are winding down to the end of our show. We took Mantic's advice. And now we're only doing 60 minute or trying to do 60 minute uh, shows as we just get him on the board. M Marty's back for the goodbyes. Uh, this is episode 37 of the Wet Shavers Roundtable. Again, thank you all who have joined us today. It's you people in the gallery that make this show happen with your questions and your participation. Uh, once more, light a candle for uh, Luke. We, we're keeping it burning. We're, we're staying strong, cyber strong for the family. Uh, so our hearts and our thoughts are going out to uh, Soap Commander, to Darren and, and Carrie. I, I don't know how you guys are doing it, but keep doing what you're doing and hang in there. Guys, any last words from you? Good luck. Big Shave West, baby. <laughs> Big Shave West. Get yes, the next one. I'm Big ready. Shave West. Until, until next week. <laughs> Shave on, people. <laughs>
Tchau.